often these are the times where the incumbent comes in and goes, you know what? Your legacy, you're scared to grow. You're not hiring during these times. You're not putting money into innovation projects. You're not testing. You're scared of interest rates being high for the next two years. You think there's no demand. I'm going to pile all my money into, into growing and investing it in our company in the next two years so that when we're out of this rut, mm -hmm. we are miles ahead of you. How do you see now uh, the, the price strategy, the pricing strategy that Tesla was, was making? Do you think that lowering prices was a good idea. I mean, it's uh, on one side, a totally precious competition. Right. And on the other side, it also shows a little bit the market dominance of Tesla that they can flex like, okay, we have still enough headroom with, of course, with our margins that we can still go lower, especially mm. now. And mm. yeah, maybe what's your opinion on the, on the price reductions? Well, I was really anti price reductions, if possible. Yeah. Like I just look at it at, at, at a capitalistic level and I go, well, a business yeah. that doesn't need to lower prices shouldn't lower prices. Mm -hmm. But in this case, Tesla needs to lower prices. And there's some, there's still some people out there that will leave me comments and go, yeah, Tesla doesn't need to lower prices. They're only doing it to pass on the cost savings. Look, folks, this is not like kindergarten class. We're not, we're, you know, we're not giving everyone cake here. Like this is the, yeah. the bottom line is Tesla can't find a buyer fast enough for the cars that they're selling at the price that they're selling. And they're ramping up massively so that they can't wait around with all these cars just sitting there. They need to lower prices. And so mm -hmm. I was really staunchly against the pricing cuts that we've seen here, but it, it is almost mandatory at this point because Tesla can't find buyers fast enough at the prices they were. Otherwise, they wouldn't have lowered prices, like I said. So I guess I commend Tesla on the fact that they can lower prices, like you said, flex their muscles and still mm -hmm. be able to eke out margins that are still higher than legacy grow at the speed that they need to because once we're out of this rut that we're in with the economy in the next two to three years like no one no other car company will be even producing close to what tesla is producing at the speed that they're producing at that time so you tesla's almost trying to buy this little trough of lower economic growth lower demand and they're trying to buy their way out of it by lowering the prices now this enters into our hot topic debate that we all have all the time as tesla bulls about advertising right I get mm -hmm. a lot of flack for it. There's some staunch people that are really for advertising now that are coming out of the woodwork and, and, and supporting it. But advertising, I look at advertising not as a short-term fix to this, but as a long-term uh, effort. Because I look at the average person that talks about cars today. They don't really know what's happening with EVs. I get a lot of random questions. I'm sure you do as well about like the stupidest questions. No offense, right? Like, where are you going to charge this car? Like, how long does it take to charge? You can just plug into a regular 120 volt plug. Oh, I didn't know that. And it seems obvious to us, but I often am reminded that I live in a bubble. I live in an EV Tesla totally. bubble, exactly. right? And so education is what I look at in the next three to five years. How do we increase that total addressable pool of buyers today that will talk about an EV? They go, I would never buy an EV. It's going to get me stranded on the highway, blah, blah, blah. Like the typical FUD talking points that legacy media has sho shoved down their throats. And how do we make them into the pool of eligible buyers in the next three to five years? The people that are anti-advertising go, yeah, all you care about is short-term profits. You want to spend some money on ads. So then you can uptake demand in the next year. I mean, to a degree that's going to happen. But I think the bigger goal is how do we educate the mass market? Elon looks at this and goes, we don't need to educate the market. If prices are low enough, people will flock towards the low price cars. They'll do their own research. They'll figure it out. Free market is all that matters. And I think it's kind of wishful thinking. Absolutely wishful thinking, in my opinion, because I'm from marketing. <laughs> Actually, I'm, 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 uh, my, my training is in marketing and everything. So from video production, so so commercials and everything is, is the way to go. And I also look, of course, with uh, my studies in communication design and everything, also onto statistics, of course. And this is also a high, we don't free ball in marketing. It's not like uh, we don't actually analyze everything. So it's interesting that uh, you do that, for example, by split tests or, or making interviews with, with your target audience um, that you have and everything. And um, things like that have to kind of happen to really see, does really everybody know about, for example, the, the price incentives that you have in the US? Mm -hmm. I think this is, if you just communicate this, it's just about communicating and <clears throat> educating, like you've said. It's not about making a, a commercial in the cinema, I don't know. Also, yeah, if, if pricing is the strategy you're doing, then advertise pricing, then mm. advertise it a little bit. And um, I think what also people mix up, I, I think, is they have a sense of traditional advertising in mind and don't think about online marketing, for example, mm. as well, because Tesla already did online marketing with 
Elon Musk, for example, as an influencer, that's influencer marketing, more <laughs> right, or less. Yeah. And then we have uh, different strategies that they could do, even if they just do a normal tour. I mean, the, their clips are performing pretty well, mm -hmm. but they also don't have to perform well on X. They have to perform well on YouTube. You have to perform well on every platform that you have. And also, mm -hmm. uh, for example, the Airport advertisings are also very important because their target audience still looks at the newspapers, even some print <laughs> magazines as well. So you have to keep that in mind. Maybe you have to put position yourself in some kind of, I don't know, magazine even. It, it's, it even goes beyond digital. But yeah. of course, the US adapted digital pretty much, but in different areas around the world, digital isn't as adapt, maybe. Mm. Also, Europe or, or Germany is a little bit... Yeah, we still have our print media here. So uh, many yeah. older folks still uh, read them and everything. So, so yeah, that's my opinion on that. So, so I, I totally agree that people have different opinions on what the term advertising means. And mm -hmm. also that is a problem in the discussion. I think that it's not yes. really, <laughs> it's, they don't even know what word, what, which word means. Yeah, it's they a loaded, it's a loaded term, right? To everyone, it means something different. And the issue with that, and, and I run online ads for a living. That's what I do, right? Yeah. And I, I manage advertising. So for me, when I think ads, I don't really think Super Bowl commercial. I don't really yeah. think, you know, you know, really cool in intermission hockey game, you know, GMC yeah. Sierra commercial, which I see all the time. I think, like you're saying, those clips that, that already exist for, 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 I mean, a large portion that Tesla's already produced, running yeah. those to audiences that are cold, that have never really talked about Tesla's or, or, you know, but are in the market for buying cars, right? One of the audiences on Google that exists when you run paid advertising is an in-market audience for car buyers. Honestly, it's kind of creepy. Google knows before you even know that you're going to buy a car. They have mm -hmm. it down to such a black box AI system where Google can predict who's in the market for what just based on Let's face it, based on reading your emails, looking at your browsing history, seeing uh, you know what Wi-Fi connection you're connected to and how far it is from certain places, like Google has this down to a science to know who's in the market for what. And one of the huge audiences that exists on, on Google ads is, uh, is in-market car buyers, people that are actively shopping for a car today. And Tesla is running ads, and I've talked about how they're running Google search ads. Those are text-based ads. But what mm -hmm. I would like for them to do is if they took their Tesla clips, the two or three minute educational stuff and pricing, maybe a pricing video, and they run and they ran that as a YouTube in feed or in stream video to that audience. I'm not sure the level of scale that Tesla could hit, but, you know, they could easily spend between one and ten million dollars on this campaign and just see what happens from there. Advertising doesn't have to be a lot. It doesn't have to be an ongoing cost even. I almost look at advertising with Tesla as like the kindling and that little spark to start a fire yeah. in different in different audiences that are cold today. So if you just started a little kindling and, and you, or you put together kindling and you sparked it up and a huge flame come up, great. Now you don't have to keep dumping money into that campaign. You can let the referral, the people that buy the cars do the talking like, like kind, of, kind of we do. Like, you know, so... I look at it as massive opportunity for really pennies on the dollar. You know, what's $10 million to Tesla? Tesla, you know, bought billions of dollars of Bitcoin. Let's, 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 let's face it. Like Tesla has a $26 billion cash reserve today. They spent five, 10, 15, 20 million dollars on a campaign. I'm not sure how much a Super Bowl commercial costs today, but I don't think it would have the same level of effect as, as having one Super Bowl commercial, in my opinion. I, I totally agree. It's interesting that um, this spending or, or, yeah, people people kind of feel like yeah, he, they don't have to spend uh, anything on on advertising because uh, it doesn't make sense and everything. I think it's too emotional this discussion as well. Mm. And you're totally right. Um, this could hit hit its mark, and if it doesn't hit its mark, you see it in the statistics, and that's the yeah. thing. You it's an analytical process. Of course, it has to be on point with the content you're providing on which platform you're providing. But also, I would say, for example, Meta or Facebook is still a huge advertising platform which mm -hmm. where the, his target audience actually is of, of teslas of course because mm -hmm. no 20 year old can afford easily a tesla <clears throat> that's why they are not really the target audience it's a little bit higher than that that's uh, why of course uh, the advertising um even exists right <laughs> yeah yeah, so. uh, yeah or mostly car buyers are older than 30 at least <laughs> so right. so uh, we have kind of a range but yeah it's it's interesting how this will unfold and i also hope that Tesla should produce those in-house clips are very important, um, that they, but then they have to spread them as well. And I think yeah. 
authentic commercials are the best that you can see because uh, Tesla mm. is known for not sugarcoating anything. You could really tell that as well on the earnings call, which yeah d does hurt the the stock, of course. But um, <laughs> yeah, how do you see that 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 being real or or, or tempering expectations a little bit and then over or, or being over yeah. or, or suddenly or sandbagging you could say it like that do you think that's a good good strategy overall or, or should should he just shut up and <laughs> be quiet and wait in the corner <laughs> look i well first i should just preface and say like whenever elon has the urge to say something i'm sure we all think we'd rather hear it than not hear it the investors in wall street would say well i'm not sure if that's the platform for that sort of talk when you know i guess you could make the argument elon looks at it and goes well, like if this wasn't the case, we would be we would be doing much better. But I don't know. To answer your question, do I think Elon overdid it? It was, it was a bit doom and gloomy for me because I think dur during these kind of times when growth is slow, interest rates are high, everyone thinks the world is ending tomorrow. These are the times where really excellent companies surpass the market leaders. And I'm mm -hmm. not saying Tesla isn't a market leader, but Often, these are the times where the incumbent comes in and goes, you know what, your legacy, you're scared to grow, you're not hiring during these times, you're not putting money into innovation projects, you're not testing, you're scared of interest rates being high for the next two years, you think there's no demand, I'm going to pile all my money into, into growing and investing it in our company in the next two years, so that when we're out of this rut, mm -hmm. we are miles ahead of you. It's it's very much like Elon to think this way, which makes me a little bit confused to go, why is he not thinking this way for the next two years instead of being more doom and gloomy? And I guess Elon's kind of said as much, and he said, I think all the bankruptcies, 08, and, and not making payroll almost made it so it almost scarred him to a degree where he looks at you know the macro mm -hmm. conditions and he goes, my God, like, you know, look at GM Ford. They went bankrupt last, uh, you know, 08 crash. Um, not that Tesla has any chance of really doing that with $26 billion in cash and almost no uh, mm -hmm. debt. But he looks at the times and he goes, this is scary and not enough people are paying attention. So was it, a, was it a signal to Legacy Auto of like, if we're worried, man, you should really, really be worried. Mm. Maybe it was like a subtle message, but is it really the place for it? I would have rather had him talk about growth past this. Like, you know, it's going to suck for the next two years, but once we're out, we're going to have this many cars in the fleet. We're going to launch some sort of software service that will get us revenue here. Uh, Robotaxi should be live by then. Here's our launch out plan for Robotaxi. Mm -hmm. But again, this is this is me dreaming. And and I guess we don't yeah. really live in, in kind of dreamland often. So 